Well, the pups have gathered all around because they know this is a winning recipe. Loaded baked potato. Folks, we cannot load any more in there. We done got as much as it'll go. It's about to bust apart at the seams. But there is tips, there is tricks that you need to know to make this the best thing you've ever seen in your life. Well, thank y'all for stopping by under the barn and loaded baked potato. Yeah, that's what is happening today. There's certain ways that you gotta cook a potato. It ain't like, I'm gonna throw it in the oven, walk off and leave it, and I ain't never gonna check on it again. We are gonna walk you through how to get the crispiest potato skin on the outside of this beautiful russet that is volunteered today, but also load it up with a full-blown meal that you don't wanna miss. You know, the folks at Ariat always have me dressed up looking really nice, they do. And they are sponsoring this video, so we're gonna need y'all's help also. I need you to go on over there to Ariat.com, pick out something you'd love to see me wear in an upcoming video, and we will give you a shout out, give you recognition that you picked it out to help me look this good. So you're gonna need some stylus. I am gonna need some stylus. Don't go plumb crazy on me, but pick out something you think that I'd really look swab and debonair in. Now, y'all might have seen it, and we did a baked potato video some time back and explain the tips and the tricks to how to get that crispy skin and that potato cooked just right. And yes, I'm gonna walk you back through it because there's certain tips that you need to know who would have ever thought that you're gonna use a temperature probe to see if your tater is done? But folks, we need to start out with a russet because they are the best. Got about two cups of water in there and we're gonna put some salt in there. Now you've heard of brining meat, but this is gonna brine that potato just a little. We're not gonna leave it in there long. I just wanna give it a good coating of that salt water because that's gonna help crisp that skin up. Then just place them on that wire rack and just let them drain there for a minute. Now, as they're doing that, and we're gonna slide them right over here if we can, go ahead and get you a good fork, something. Pierce them taters to where we can let some of that moisture out so that skin don't crack and explode. And what size potato is that? I would call this the jumbo large russet. He come all the way from Idaho on a boat today. Rode right down here he did. Now, potatoes, hey, they're pretty cheap. And when we get through with this loaded deal, folks, you're gonna to think to yourself, this is a full-blown meal, something that you're gonna to have to have at least once or twice a week. Now, a lot of you, when you go to bake potato, and I did for a long time, roll them things in tin foil, sometimes roll them up twice, stick them in the oven and bake them. The best way to really get the best baked potato, good and crispy skin, there's no wrapping involved whatsoever, no folks. Wrapping? No wrapping? No wrapping. Mean, we need no wrapping them taters. I ain't talking about maters. We gonna have some taters, yeah. <laughs> that wasn't a very good wrap. Well, I, it's, you don't wrap taters, so I couldn't get all into it. Okay. So go ahead, while these is drying out, preheat your oven in the house to 450 degrees. Yeah, we need to be really hot, we do. And then we're gonna slide them in there just like this. If you're in the house on a baking sheet, just slide them in there and they're gonna cook for about an hour and so wait, uh, some change. Put them on the rack? Yes, put them on a rack, set them in a baking pan or a cookie sheet. That way you've got ventilation in here. Now you can just lay them straight on the rack in your oven, you can, but I prefer you do it on this wire rack. I'm gonna meet y'all over here at the Dutch oven because we ain't doing them in the house. You're thinking, that's an awful big oven to be cooking just them taters in. Well, it is, but folks, I ain't got a wire rack that'll fit in a 14 and a 12. And I need a little more space than what that wire rack is gonna give me. So, you know them trivets we sell? I took the legs out of this one. I'm gonna set him right down there in that. Expanded metal that I cut to size to fit. There's about an inch of air space in between that rack and the potatoes. Just lay them straight down in there. Put the lid on them and let's get some coals. You know, when you're baking potatoes, it takes really a lot of heat in a Dutch oven to get things really started. You can manage that by really putting a really heavy ring around the bottom and load up heavy on top. Because folks, remember, we got an inch space in there between the potatoes and the bottom. That's gonna keep that from burning. But it, if you're in a house, you're gonna cook these about 55, 60 minutes, maybe a little more. 
but we're going to probe them. And when they reach that magic temperature of 210 degrees, then we're going to put a little trick on them to make things just mm, crisp up so nice. And if you're doing this in a Dutch oven, make sure you've got plenty of coals because you may have to refire this oven when you're talking about a 45 minute cook. Now, we're not going to be rotating them taters and rolling it around because when we got that lid off, folks, we're losing a lot of that heat and we need to try to keep that temperature constant pretty close to 450 degrees. When we're going to regulate that heat and you think, is it hot enough? Are we still cooking? You've been on 30 minutes or something. Take your hand, put it right down there about a hand width away from them coals. If you can hold that more than five seconds, it's not hot enough. But I guarantee you, if you start out with good hardwood like a mesquite or oak or good hardwood lump, you're going to be able to maintain that heat and use that. Do not use a soft wood because it's not going to make enough heat to make you a coal. We've been on about 40 minutes, so it's time we check them taters. So I'm going to pull out my chef's temp and we are going to see what the temperature is. So we're going to get the lid back on there and let them finish cooking out. But it's time to throw the steak on the grill. About a 12 ounce New York strip here, certified Angus beef. And y'all have seen me cook a lot of steaks and we're just going to season this the same way I always do. A little lime juice. Remember, we're not making margaritas. Lime juice is a natural tenderizer, breaks down connective tissue in meat, which makes things more tender. If you don't believe me, ask the big. He is right there. He will tell you the fact. Now, I always season my steaks with our original seasoning. Make sure that you get it seasoned well. It is time to throw the beef on the grill, and it is one of my favorite things. It is. Remember, we're going to cook this on the indirect side for so long, so I'll meet y'all over here. And when we're talking indirect, remember, all the fire is down there on that end, and this is a hot one, so we're going to cook down here where there ain't no fire. I'm going to shut that lid. I'm going to throw me in a little mesquite. We're going to give it a little mesquite bath there to go with it. Time to check these things, it is. When you get to 200 degrees, which is about where we're at, 197, 98, I need you to get you about two tablespoons of melted butter and I need you to coat this top side with it. Now, one of my more favorite things to put on here is bacon grease. So if you got some of that, be sure and put it on there. We're gonna cook them probably about 10 more minutes and they'll be ready to go, but it is time we check that steak. This steak has been on there about four minutes it has and we need to put her down there and let it get some color on that end. But you know how you get a baked potato and they always be bringing you cold sour cream and cold butter to put on it? If you're hot, like something you want to eat, why cool it off? So folks, let's just blend this stuff together right off the bat. We're going to take about half a stick of that wonderful Kerrygold butter and we're going to let it melt. And then we're going to add us about four or five tablespoons of sour cream, a little bit of smoked paprika. And ooh, that folks is going to be good to pour on whatever you got it on. Well, that steak be about done to my liking it is. So let's go ahead and bring this melted butter over. And oh my gosh, that thing was hot. You see me leave that steak on the far indirect side where it wasn't going to hurt. And folks, the rosemary is trying to blow away here. So let me get it in there before anybody else. Whoop, that went about half of it, Shen. Now, we're going to add a little smoked paprika to this because I like the flavor that it brings out. And then it is time to blend us in some sour cream. If we'd have done this all together right at the start, it would have got way too watery. So you gonna pull that butter off after it's melted and then let's mix all this in and try to get us a smooth consistency. I would say that was the perfect pourable consistency, I would. We're gonna let that sit right there. That steak is done, I promise you. So we're gonna pull it off over here and get it sliced up paper thin and get them potatoes out. And ooh, we're gonna do the magic, magic dance cause it's gonna be some fine dining.
that is what I call a masterpiece. I mean, I don't even know the where to begin to eat on this thing is, but I told Shan, I said, I just served four people right there. She said, yep, or one beagle. Now, as soon as them potatoes hit 210, get them out of there, cut them instantly. Because when you don't, you don't cut them quick, you're letting all that steam just set in there. And what does steam make? Moisture. What does moisture make? Soggy potatoes. And then you layer it how you see fit. But that saws, folks, if you'll put some of that in there first and then just go to layering that goodness on there. And if you need to thin that sauce, she can come up with a pretty good idea because we top this with pickled jalapenos. She just strained a little of that juice right in there and stirred it up. But this would also work well with some of our pork butt that we done on that video or the smoked brisket. Hey, so many things will fit in this, but I've been craving this ever since we started. So let me get some of that. I'm gonna get that one right there. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Make you want to dig them taters first. You gotta dig them, throw them up over there, and you gotta wash them around, round, round. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what I call really good. That's a bird dog point at something you want to eat. I'm going to have one more bite of this, folks. But you see, I done kept these morsels of scraps left over for my fine participants that have been out here with me throughout the day. Be gear first because you're the old timer. Cletus, I'm going to wait and give you the whole bowl here in a minute because I know what you can eat. There's Lulu. Where you at there, Schnauzer? There he is. Cletus, can you know anything about eating out of a bowl? No? His head's too big. Now, don't forget to comment about Ariad over there about my wardrobe because I need y'all's help. I want to see what y'all pick out for me to wear. So remember, check that website out of there and then comment what you'd have me wear. It is with great pride, honor, and privilege that I tip my hat to all our service men and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag of flying. We commend you, we do. Rest of you, now I'm going to tell you something. Be sure and keep an eye on our events page because there are still a lot of things coming up. The intimate evenings there. Come on in here tight because it's fitting to happen. I'm going to give you a loaded baked potato hug. Come on, get up in here close because I'm going to mash you in them taters. There we go. God bless you, each and every one, and I'll see you down the biggest loaded baked potato trail you ever trailed on. Cletus is I'll eat steak. I don't, Duker is probably on vacation. Lou? That's your size bowl, Mage. Atta boy, go to town on it, buddy.